Shalom, I am Rabbi Saul Fravor. You're watching Rabbi Rock. Right in your backyard, or your front yard, is a world of wonders. There's a world of food that you don't realize is edible and healthy. And uh, this is the art of foraging. And here we have today Wild Man Steve, Steve Bro, the man who ate Central Park. Welcome. Hi, nice seeing you. Good to have you here. And uh, you brought many goodies with you. That's right. These are all common plants, renewable resources. You pick them, they grow back again. You need to know what they are with 100% certainty. And if you eat the wrong thing, uh -huh. so I teach people how to recognize the plant, same as going into the supermarket and recognizing tomatoes and celery, except we're not familiar with these, and uh, what you can do with them. And one of the most common ones, and one of the best in early spring, is the dandelion. Hmm. Name comes from the French, Don Lion, means lion's tooth, because it has these jagged teeth. Uh, let's stop that. These jagged, don't you bite me. These jagged, will you stop that? I'll bite you. Jagged teeth on the leaf. It tastes like lettuce. Let us see what you think. Has more vitamins than anything you can buy in the store. Baruch Adonai, Baruch so what do Scrumptious. you think? Scrumptious. Yeah. It can be very dangerous, though. I was doing a nature tour 20 years ago and looking for wild plants, teaching people about renewable resources, and there were two plants on the tour, undercover park rangers disguised as nature lovers. It's a man and a woman. They said they were married. They never held hands or kissed. I figured they were married a long time. <laughs> the, the parks commissioner didn't like my nature tour. It's a man by the name of Henry Stern. There's this wild man in Central Park, this hairy fellow, he's got a pith hat, and he's eating our dandelions. We can't have someone going into Central Park and eating the dandelions. It's like going into the Central Park Zoo and eating the bear cubs. <laughs> so he put undercover agents on my tour. They undercover. paid me with marked bills. They took su surveillance cameras. Uh, they had walkie-talkies. And when I uh, ate a dandelion, the man pulled out his walkie-talkie hid behind a tree. All right, there he is on 81st Street. Go get him. <laughs> Every uniform park ranger in New York City jumped out from behind the bushes. A they, sting operation. Yeah, oh. yeah. They surrounded me in case I was going to climb up a tree, put me in handcuffs lest I bashed them on the head, boing, with a dandelion. They searched me. I don't know if they're looking for weeds or weed, but they hauled me off to the police station in handcuffs where they took fingerprints and mug shots. They searched my backpack. Fortunately, I'd eaten all the evidence. Did they put you on a lineup? Uh, no, but they gave me a desk appearance ticket that said I had to go to court and could face a year in jail if convicted for criminal mischief for oh removing vegetation from the park. And then they made a really bad mistake. They let me go. I went home and called every TV station, newspaper, radio show, wire service. Next day, on the way to the newsstand, five cops came after me but they wanted my autograph, <laughs> and I was suddenly world famous. Wow. Uh, well, I was on CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. I was on page one of the Chicago Time, Sun Times. The BBC covered the story. When they took me to court, I served Wild Man's Five Borough Salad with some of the things on the table here. You offered some to the judge? Uh, it was on the steps of the Manhattan Criminal Courthouse. Oh, okay. The press ate it up. <laughs> and after that, uh, Commissioner Stern asked to negotiate with me and he dropped the charges and hired me to lead the same nature tours I was leading when I was arrested. The same one that was the Yeah, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same guy. We like Steve Brill. We're <laughs> happy to have him in the <laughs> parks department. <laughs> and that was the second best thing that ever happened to me in Central Park. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. You well, want to know what the first best thing was? Uh, of course I want to know. Uh, a few years ago, I was leading a nature tour in Central Park, and there was a beautiful woman on the tour who was wilder than I was. We started seeing each other, and uh, first we went to the Galapagos Islands, and then we went to Antarctica. Wow. And uh, f uh, four years ago, wow. you know who married us? You did. <laughs> <laughs> and two years ago, What's we had 
my baby. Her name is Violet. Violet, and very she's a wild one too. Uh, when I was preparing the specimens we have here, she wanted to try every single one of them. So yeah. let's take a look at another sure. plant. This one is called chickweed. Very easy to recognize. It always has leaves in twos. It's a delicate, slender plant. It grows oh. on lawns. It likes the cold weather. We're taping this uh, the first day of spring. So right. uh, these are seasonal plants. And it's called chickweed uh, because if I were a chicken, <coughs> chickens love it. Tastes like corn. So you have to try it even if you're afraid, because if you're afraid, that means you're chicken and you'll love it. <laughs> Can I eat the whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing. Taste a little bit of a corn flavor. This is so nutritious. It's that very nice. Yeah, herbalists used to prescribe this to convalescents uh, back in the day, and the mineral and vitamin content would help them recover. It's really? Uh, another well, really well, good are, one. What are the mineral and vitamins in uh, this? There's, there's uh, vitamin C, there's B complex, uh, biotin especially, there's some vitamin E. There are also saponins, which are chemicals related to uh, fats and soap that help the uh, body metabolize fat. So this is sold mm. in health food stores for weight loss. I'm not sure how effective it is, but it's certainly low in calories and high in nutrients. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice, delicious looking plant. Here's something that's quite a bit stronger tasting. Let's see. That's probably the only one I really know. What happens? Onion grass, right? Onion grass, right. Yeah. Also called wild onion and field garlic. It's related to commercial onions. Yeah. It has a little bulb underneath, which gets bigger and sharper tasting as the weather gets warmer. And now it tastes sort of like scallions. Yeah. And it has the yeah. medicinal properties of garlic. It reduces high blood pressure. It detoxifies the body. Mm. And it tastes good. Delicious. That is really good. Yeah, there are relatives that are even better. There's one with a broad leaf, and these have to smell like onions. There are poisonous plants that look like members of the onion family, ah. but they have no smell. So you just uh, you just tear it and smell. If it smells, then it's okay. If it smells like onions, it's yeah. okay. There's one with a really broad leaf called a ramp, which grows around uh, here throughout our area. I lead tours throughout the tri-state area. Yeah. And uh, that saved a lot of kids one day of school every year in the deep south. What happened was the pioneers who were starving in the springtime and depleted of nutrients because they hadn't had any fresh vegetables all winter learned about the ramp from the Native Americans and they would celebrate and they still have ramp festivals in the south to this day. Mm. The ramps are delicious and uh, never get between a ramp and a, a chef with a sharp knife. Uh, the yeah. chefs love it but they give you really really bad breath. I, I, I I could tell, I mean, yeah. And this isn't a ramp. The ramp is much stronger than this. And uh, what, what happens is they have ramp festivals in the South celebrating the pioneers' survival with cooking contests, uh, rides, games, all mm. kinds of amusements. And the day after the ramp festival, they close all the schools because they can't pay the teachers enough money to be in the same classroom with a bunch of kids <laughs> who've been eating ramps all weekend. Wow. But there's a cure. There's a, I'll, I'll charge you there's a lot. There's a cure yeah, for your onions, charge. really? For, for the bad breath. Huh. It's this one. This is a tree called the black birch. No leaves yet. This is, again, uh, the first day of spring. Right. And it has these tiny little green yeah. buds. Here, this bud's for you. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Uh, you chew on this like chewing gum. I could eat and the bud? You, or, you don't or, or eat it. You chew it like chewing gum. And tell me if you can detect what the flavor is. It's quite good. And it will get rid of the. First of all, it reminds me of those waxy cones that you we you, we used to blow on um, Halloween. You know those little whistle, like a, w a waxy. Right, right. Um, you getting the flavor? It's root beer. Close, very close. Uh, it's oil of wintergreen, so it tastes mm. like winter fresh gum. Yeah, now now I'm getting it. I mean, really, not just because you told me, but. Yeah, yeah. The, the flavor is. It takes is, a little while to come on. The flavor is quite. I'm getting the, the mint. The, the mint feeling. In my yeah, it's yeah. not really mint. It's oil of wintergreen, and this is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. This is a native plant, so mm -hmm. the Native Americans used it, and uh, what they would do is get a lot of the twigs. They'd pour boiling water on it. Ow! Not while it's in your hand. <laughs> they'd pour boiling water on it, make a strong tea, and they would drink the tea. Uh, maybe once a cup of tea, maybe once an hour, if they had an injury or they had arthritis or a headache. And um, a cup of tea is about the equivalent of a half an aspirin. So if you're drinking this all day, you're going to get some very significant pain relief. 
and uh, it's also good for, like aspirin, it mm -hmm. reduces the chance of heart attacks. We've done yeah, an experiment yeah. here. See, you're chewing on yeah, it. Look, he's not having a heart attack. It works. <laughs>